Testosterone has become a very hot topic in the health and fitness spaces over the past few years, which has made many men wonder about their own testosterone levels and if they should be checked. However, we should probably first know what testosterone is actually supposed to do before jumping on the low T or testosterone replacement therapy bandwagon. Testosterone does a heck of a lot more than just help with muscle mass and libido, which we will cover in today's video, but we will also cover some of the other incredible effects that it has on the human body, as well as include a quick, fun, and we'll even say a little bit of a comical comparison of testosterone and estrogen with females. So hopefully you enjoy what we have to talk about today, and hopefully we don't rub anybody the wrong way, like the ER doctor that sent us an email about some of the things he didn't like about our previous testosterone replacement therapy video. So of course, we'll have to spend some time responding to that at the end of the video. It's definitely gonna be a fun one, so let's jump right into this anatomical and physiological awesomeness. So let's quickly review some key points on testosterone and where it comes from by taking a look at some of the cadaver dissections. Testosterone is classified as an androgen. Androgens are steroid hormones that promote the development of masculine characteristics, and testosterone is the main or primary androgen. Testosterone is produced mainly in two places, the adrenal glands, specifically this outer portion of the adrenal gland called the adrenal cortex, and of course testosterone is also produced by the testes. The testes produce the majority of the testosterone. The amount produced by the adrenal cortex is minimal, as this accounts for less than 5% of the testosterone in males. But this minimal amount does contribute to the development of axillary and pubic hair in females. Within the testes, there are cells known as Leydig cells, and these are the cells that produce and secrete the testosterone into the bloodstream. And as you can see from this dissection, there's a cord attached to the testes called the spermatic cord, and this has blood vessels, nerves, and the vas deferens that transport sperm out of the testes. And as an FYI, this is a tube that gets cut during the male birth control procedure called a vasectomy. But the testosterone will be secreted into the blood vessels within this cord, and this is how it will then circulate throughout the entire body in order to have its various effects. So what are the effects of testosterone? And how does this vary throughout the different stages of our lives? Testosterone is important before we are even born. During male fetal development, Testosterone is being secreted in moderate amounts and promoting the development of male body parts, such as the penis, scrotum, prostate gland, seminal vesicles, and other male genital ducts. It also helps promote the descent of the testes prior to birth. Then, soon after birth, you get another spike in testosterone that lasts for the first few months of life. This is sometimes referred to as first puberty or mini puberty. Now, we don't fully understand all the reasons why this happens, but you may notice more acne on a baby during this time period, the skin may be a little bit more oily, and there are definite increases in the size of male genital structures due to this spike. But some other proposed reasons for this mini puberty are that it likely influences behavior and cognitive functions. It may also influence spermatogenesis later in life, as serum testosterone levels in infancy may be a predictor of adult total sperm count. So in other words, there's some research indicating that a male's reproductive set point may start shortly after birth and persist into adulthood. And this is a very fascinating topic of research, and it will be interesting to see what new information comes in the future about how this mini puberty affects the infant and how it may affect that person later in life. After this period and throughout the remainder of childhood, essentially no testosterone is produced until we get to what most of us would certainly not think of as a mini puberty. This is much more of a robust, massive, all hell breaks loose kind of a puberty that we are all very familiar with. At about the ages of 10 to 13, males get a huge spike in testosterone and will maintain these higher levels throughout life, but it will eventually begin to taper beginning in a male's 40s, as you can see by the chart. But if I may, just quickly compare what happens at puberty and throughout life with the main female sex hormone, estrogen. Like testosterone, it is essentially non-existent throughout childhood, as you can see with our beginning red line there. But then puberty happens and we get something like this. Menopause and eventual death. Now hopefully we can all see some of the humor in that. But in all seriousness, if you understand the power of hormones, you understand how important this is from a female reproduction standpoint. 
and how this can influence how someone feels, their behavior, emotions, etc. Men do have daily fluctuations in testosterone levels, but as you can see based on the charts, the overall changes are minimal to what a female experiences throughout the menstrual cycle. But guys, if we had this type of fluctuation in testosterone every 28 days or so, we'd have some things to say about it too. But two things that are actually very interesting about these graphs is one, again, this menopause right here. As I mentioned, this dramatic change in hormones, especially this dramatic drop, can really influence how someone is feeling. Like, there are some very uncomfortable and annoying symptoms that women have to go through during this time period. And the second thing that is very important about the differences between these two graphs is how this affects bone health. Both testosterone and estrogen are osteoprotective, meaning they protect the bones. But because you don't get this sudden drop in testosterone with men, it's more gradual, this is one of the main reasons why females are eight times more likely to get osteoporosis than men. And women that are watching this video, we have you covered with an estrogen video that talks about how amazing estrogen is. And I'll link that at the end of this video. But let's get back to all the many powerful effects that testosterone has on the body, starting with men's hairy bodies. Testosterone causes hair growth in the pubic region, axillary or armpits, the abdomen, face, usually on the chest and sometimes on the back. It also causes hair on most other portions of the body, like the arms and legs, to become more prolific. Yeah, that last sentence was actually in one of my favorite medical physiology texts, hair becoming more prolific. But one of the potential cons of this is that testosterone can also decrease hair growth on top of the head, leading to male pattern baldness. Testosterone is converted to dihydrotestosterone, DHT, at the follicles on the scalp. And when the DHT binds to the hair follicle receptors, it can cause the follicles to shrink, leading to baldness. Now we actually have a more detailed video on how hair loss works that I will link at the end of this video, but it is important to note that testosterone is only one part of this process because there are plenty of men that have normal and even high levels of testosterone that don't become bald. So you also have to have a genetic predisposition to baldness. However, if you are concerned about or experiencing hair loss, you might appreciate the sponsor of today's video, iRestore. iRestore makes this nifty little piece of technology called the iRestore Elite device. And this has been shown to be an effective option for hair loss. There are a lot of low level laser therapy devices out there, but the reason I prefer this device compared to others on the market is due to its quality and enhanced coverage of the scalp. It uses Lumitech technology that consists of 500 medical grade lasers and LEDs. And because it uses both lasers and LEDs, you get more uniform coverage and thorough treatment of all the hair follicles. It is also FDA cleared and is a medication free option to help with hair loss. And as I've mentioned, has been clinically shown to help support hair growth. It only needs to be used for 12 minutes a day and the triple wavelength power ensures deeper and more effective treatment that can help enhance cellular metabolism on the scalp, improve blood flow and reduce inflammation, which are factors that contribute to hair growth. iRestore also wants you to be completely satisfied with your purchase. So if you aren't 100% satisfied with your results, they have a 12 month money back guarantee. So if you're interested, visit the link on screen and use our coupon code IOHA to get $625 off the iRestore Elite device. We'll also include that information in the description below. So back to the many effects of testosterone. Testosterone causes enlargement of the larynx or what many people refer to as the Adam's apple or the voice box. These changes eventually result in the typical adult masculine voice. And I say eventually because as many teenage boys know, there's a bit of a transition period where some cracking of the voice can occur. Testosterone increases the thickness of the skin over the entire body and the ruggedness of the subcutaneous or fatty tissue. It also increases the size and rate of secretion by glands in the skin called sebaceous glands, especially the sebaceous glands of the face. These glands produce an oily substance called sebum, and this increase in sebum results in the acne that often appears during male adolescence. But luckily, the skin adapts to this over time and the acne improves for most. Testosterone has a massive effect on protein anabolism and therefore has a powerful influence on the musculoskeletal system. It promotes protein deposition in bones and this causes the bones to retain more calcium with the overall effect being larger and thicker bones. And one of the most prominent male characteristics is the development of increasing musculature after puberty, 
with most males having about a 50% increase in muscle mass over that which occurs with females during puberty. And because these impressive effects on the musculoskeletal system, this is why some will use synthetic androgens to increase athletic and muscular performance, which obviously can come with some negative side effects. Testosterone also increases metabolism by about 10 to 15%, and also increases the amount of red blood cells circulating throughout the body. Both of these are actually thought to be more of an indirect effect of testosterone rather than a direct effect, meaning it is believed that the increased metabolism is likely due to testosterone's influence on protein synthesis. Cells creating more proteins results in more metabolically active cells. Same kind of thing with the red blood cell production. Testosterone doesn't seem to directly increase this hormone called erythropoietin or EPO, which is the hormone responsible for stimulating red blood cell production. Instead, they think it was more of a secondary effect from things, again, like the increase in muscle and protein synthesis, and the red blood cell production just kind of followed suit due to these other effects. Testosterone also regulates sperm production, increases libido, and as many teenage boys are quite excited about, testosterone secretion after puberty increases the size of the penis, scrotum, and testes by about eightfold. So you can see where some of that excitement might come from. But again, female testosterone secretion from the adrenal cortex has minimal effects, those being axillary and pubic hair, but it does have a small effect on bone health, libido, mood, even follicular development within the ovaries, and can help a little bit with tissue maintenance. But estrogen will have a much larger effect on the female body. And again, we'll provide a link to our estrogen video. Now let's briefly talk about testosterone replacement therapy. Many men are concerned that they might have low testosterone. This might just be more of a curiosity, or they may have symptoms like decreased libido, fatigue, changes in body composition. There are multiple symptoms that can actually come from having low testosterone. Now we do have a longer video on what happens specifically with low testosterone, but we will cover some key points now. And the interesting thing about that previous video is what I mentioned in the intro. We received an email from someone claiming to be an ER doctor at a hospital in Boston, and he did have a few issues with that low testosterone video. I won't read everything in the email, but one of the things he said was this. I just wish you would have stated more clearly that low testosterone levels, especially in younger men, is very, very rarely indicative of anything wrong unless there are other accompanying symptoms. Now, the first thing that I thought when I read this email was, did he even watch the video? One of the main points stressed in that video was to talk about how testosterone replacement therapy shouldn't just be done all willy-nilly. Like within the first 20 seconds of the video, I mentioned how it's estimated that up to 25% of men taking testosterone didn't even have a testosterone level drawn prior to initiating therapy, which getting that initial blood draw is kind of important. For one, seeing if someone has low testosterone in the first place, and two, being able to monitor response to therapy if testosterone is initiated. But again, in response to this email, it was stressed more than once throughout the video that a low testosterone level alone is not enough for a clinician to diagnose someone with low testosterone. It needs to also be combined with specific symptoms. But apparently, he missed that multiple times. And the last thing I'll address from the email is this. Seriously, after your and similar videos came out, we were inundated with young guys demanding testosterone tests. It was insane. I mean, I've never worked at that particular hospital, so I can't speak directly to that ER, but that certainly has not been my experience in the urgent care or even when I was doing my rotations in the ER. And I just can't see guys watching our YouTube videos and being like, Hmm, I wonder if I have low testosterone. This is a crisis. To the emergency department. I think most men are going to go to their primary care provider or one of the many men's health clinics that are popping up these days rather than inundating the ERs. So hopefully this gave you all some useful information on testosterone. And if you don't enjoy me responding to criticism or feedback from other creators or people that send us emails or DMs, please let me know in the comments because this is the first time I've actually ever responded to something like this in a video. I wouldn't want it to devolve into people just ragging on each other for the sake of being mean. And to be fair, he did have some positive things to say about the channel. But this is really only useful if it provides an opportunity for us to clarify information for you as a viewer and provide additional learning opportunities for all of us. So again, any feedback on this would be appreciated. I also appreciate you watching this video and supporting the channel. 
Like I mentioned, I'll link the estrogen and testosterone video somewhere over here on the left side of the screen. If you want to check out iRestore, that link is in the description. And I think that finally covers everything. So I'll see you next time.